we are at the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy, and we are honored to have uh, Ms. Uh, Martha Cho here with us. Well, Joanne, it's nice to meet you, and it's wonderful to be here. I'm really looking forward to the talk. Perfect. You started out from being a high school teacher, moved to commercial banking, which is typically kind of like a man's mm -hmm. space, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and eventually uh, competing for the proposal for assembling the Boeing New 787, the Dreamliner. Um, what are some of the standing out challenges that you first that you faced in this long ranging career? I mean, you mentioned a few of them. You know, as a city council, like you know, they brought you a tie instead of you know, women that like you were not particularly recognized, but uh, what are some other challenges that you faced being in this kind of... Um, I think a lot of it really has to do with um, sort of uh, breaking the expectations um, that may be out there. Um, you know, I think when I was in banking, it was in fact largely a, a man's uh, world. I was really, really fortunate because my boss was a woman. And she was a great mentor and a great champion for me. And so she really advocated for me. Um, she was really supportive of my first major promotion. And what I didn't know is, is she had asked her mentor to also be a mentor to me because um, she knew that my first assignment was going to be really tough, and he was, and eventually I went uh, to work for him. But I think, you know, for me, it was trying to figure out how I use my knowledge and my experiences in my previous job and apply them to my next job. And something that I'll talk about a little bit later is, you know, having self-confidence in my abilities. Um, a lot of my jobs happened to be ones that I had never done before and sort of overcoming my own self-doubt about thinking, you know, I really don't belong here, mm -hmm. um, or I'm gonna fail. Um, but then kind of stepping back and saying, I'm here for a reason, um, I can do it. So uh, the airline industry, uh, again, as we kind of mentioned, is a pretty predominantly male mm -hmm. dominated. <laughs> and what do you think of this? And have you ever experienced actually the imposter syndrome mm -hmm. when you were working uh, in the Boeing propos proposal? So I should um, maybe describe that. Uh, I was working for the governor at the time, mm -hmm. and Boeing put out for a bid for all 50 states the right to be the assembly location for the new generation of their airline. Now, they were not very happy with the business climate of Washington State. And that's why they put it out for bid. If they had, they could find a way to exclude Washington State, they probably would have. So they didn't really give us any chance of winning, and I kind of knew that. So the governor appointed me to lead a team um, to go win it, and we had two competing locations in the state, and it was high stakes. Uh, there were jobs involved. If we lost the bid, it would signal to the country, to the state that we lost one of our only homegrown major industries. And what kind of signal would that send to other businesses? Um, so it was really pressure packed. It was you know, morning, noon, and night. It was weekends. Um, and there were a lot of times when I thought, I don't know if I can do this. Um, and what eventually uh, helped me was I had a terrific team and really looking to my team and uh, working really hard to understand what were the success factors, what was the criteria, and I think it's another example of where relationships came into play. Coincidentally, the head of the Boeing Vice President, uh, Boeing External Relations was a good friend of mine. So I said, Bob, you're gonna be my speed dial, and he was. Uh, and I knew that he wouldn't tell me anything that he couldn't. But what I told my team was, is we're going to engage Boeing and we're going to ask them every question we can think of, even questions we know they can't answer. The reason is it's going to give us insight into their thinking, which may help inform our proposal. And that's exactly what we did. And I was shocked that over the course of the four or five months of competition, there were literally probably less than 10 questions that they said they couldn't answer. Um, but we gained a tremendous amount of insight, intelligence, information that we used to shape our proposal. And because of the great um, analysis, we correctly guessed our competition and we put together a winning proposal. After we won it, which was, you know, wonderful, um, <laughs> you know, Boeing said no one engaged them like we did. Um, but there were a lot of doubts along the way and um, a lot of fear because uh, there was so much at stake. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, 
you got to be in the moment. You don't have a choice. Uh, mm -hmm. And the only thing you could do is to give it your absolute all. And I was really fortunate. We put together an outstanding team and there was mutual support. Even though there were two competing locations, we knew that the most important thing was for our state to win that bid, which we did. You were born and raised in, in the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, however, you are from Asian descent. Um, did this place extra pressure on you to deliver uh, or prove yourself at work being Asian and a woman while growing up? In well, you know, I think it was, for me, it was a matter of also navigating two cultures, if you will. You know, for those of us who were uh, raised in Asian households, we were told to be quiet, um, never brag, never stand out, uh, never talk about yourself. And yet, in the workplace or at school, you, you sort of learn that you've got to understand how to self-advocate for yourself. So, you know, part of that was, I think, um, the opportunity to learn but understanding that you have to walk between uh, two cultures. You know, I think many of us um, have found ourselves to be the only, the only woman in the room, the only Asian, the only Asian woman. And I think we bring an important perspective, and I think part of the responsibility is to give voice to an important perspective. At the same time, never uh, feeling uh, that we carry the weight of our of all the gender on our shoulders or are authorized or entitled to speak for all women or for all Asians. And yet I think we have an important perspective. You know, but I can also think of uh, chapters in my life where I sort of faced this bias. Uh, when I was running for the city council, uh, I was running for a seat that was being vacated by another Asian woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the campaign trail, I would get asked, are you running for the Asian woman's seat? And my, response, <laughs> and my response was, I didn't notice the label on the door. I don't think it's an Asian woman's seat. I don't think there's a white man's seat. And uh, people would press me on it. And I would say, I think the voters in Seattle are smart enough to look at the qualifications that I bring and then make a decision. Now, another interesting um, chapter was when I was running for re-election. There were several running uh, women running, and if uh, a number of those candidates won, we would have had seven out of nine being women. So I got a lot of questions. Well, don't you think that's too many women on the council? Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, do you think there are too many men on the council historically? So you sort of, you know, had to uh, kind of grapple with these biases that came out. Well, in fact, we all got elected, and there were seven out of nine. Uh, uh, women who served on the city council. So it was, I think, a terrific opportunity to kind of showcase women in elected office. Um, I have to share with you one really funny story, though. We had sister city relationships, and our sister city from uh, Japan came, and you know, it's a tradition of gift giving. And uh, we were saying goodbye, and they were in front of the whole council, and uh, the head of the delegation was hesitant and hemming and hawing, and finally said, I have to apologize. Um, we have gifts for all of you, but um, our gifts are neckties because we thought you were all men. <laughs> so it's a really funny chapter, like bad staff. Um, but it was kind of interesting, you know, from their perspective, to have seven women was just inconceivable. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a, it's a fact of life, but I think we're breaking those, those kind of ceilings. Um, just adding a little bit more into that, like, do you think the U.S. is has come a longer way like because there's a lot of obviously women here in, yes. in my class and a lot of them are Asian raised mm -hmm. born and raised in Asia why do you think you know kind of like the challenges because the US seems to be doing a little bit better or really trying or at least bringing a very you know topic or important conversation out there about women what is the perspective for for, for women in I think women have made progress, but if you look at the data, uh, we're still woefully underrepresented at the CEO level, at the board table, at university presidents. So there's still a long, long way to go. We don't have a woman president yet. There are, um, there are a number of women presidents, uh, President Park in South Korea. Um, so I think we're ready for major changes, but I think those biases are very tough. And you know, a lot of it has to do with how do positions of power get um, appointed or elected or chosen. And oftentimes it's because there's a very small circle who's in charge of nominations. And if their circle doesn't include women, it kind of self-perpetuates that. So I think the challenge is to figure out where the leverage point is, right? To elect more women to boards, to get them on nominating committees, because that really then gets to some of 
the root cause. And I think there's been um, a much more concerted effort to get women appointed to boards. Um, they're influential in terms of selecting CEOs and th thinking about how far in the pipeline we need to go to affect that kind of change. Okay. Now, in an interview uh, for Seattle Business, you mentioned that leadership is about finding, encouraging, and nurturing the right people, giving them wings to fly, and doing what you need to do to support them. How does Martha <laughs> choose, uh, you know, a leader? How do you how do you pick from from the let's say the pack, or how do you do you see something in everybody, or do you tend to pick someone specific, or? Well, I think one of the things that I look for is whether. Um, a person it has an interest in doing good and advancing something other than him or herself. Um, if there's a, um, a commitment to a greater good, um, if there's a, a willingness to share credit and share power, um, if there's a willingness to learn uh, and grow from mistakes. Um, and I think my job Someone told me very early in my career that one of my jobs as a leader was to find and to groom my replacement. So I've taken that very seriously. Um, and I've done, I tried to do what other people did for me, which is to champion them and kind of push them into positions perhaps before they thought they were ready, but make sure that they knew that I was there because I'm the benefit of so many people who did that for me, tapped me on the shoulder and said, take this job or do this. And I, I didn't think I was anywhere near ready. Um, but I think that was, those are kind of the areas of the fastest growth for me. And, you know, I'm fortunate that a lot of my mentors have gone on to become um, prominent leaders in their own right um, and are now mentoring others as well. That's great. Um, now, since we're, we're going to be speaking to a lot of women here yes. at the LKY yes. included, and we're going to be there listening to you carefully. <laughs> um, but do you have, beyond that, like any words of encouragement to all the women um, that are, you know, here at the LKY studying, and just to tell you briefly about my class, I, we just started here, so I'm a fresh, you know, student, so I'm, I still, I'm full of hope and everything. <laughs> That's <still>. great. <laughs> so, but... To be very honest, I've never seen so much diversity in my classroom. Mm. And diversity not only because we come from different countries, but diversity because there's women um, that have babies. Uh, we have one, mm. one girl that is pregnant. Mm. We have uh, women that have three kids. We have uh, women that have left children at home mm. in their original countries mm. to come here and pursue a career. Mm. So it is... Uh, heartwarming to see yeah. how we are really we really want this yes. right that's why we're here we're, yes. we're, we're setting a few things aside and yeah. everything uh, what are those wonderful words of encouragement <laughs> that you can give us for well, the future well I think first of all is to start with now okay and really be here now you are so lucky to have this cohort of colleagues right now and um, use this cohort as a major means of support for the challenges you'll face now and I think you'll be surprised at how long these friendships last. Um, you know, take in everything you possibly can. You're at a great university, you've got great professors, you've got great colleagues. Take advantage of everything you possibly can. This is kind of a unique stage in your life. And what I, I tell students is you almost can't fail right now. You know, push yourself, get out of your comfort zone, take risks, uh, go for assignments that you're not sure if you can do. Um, because this is actually when you should be taking the biggest risks and, and hopefully beyond. Um, but you're in kind of an ideal situation. Um, I think also is to take stock of who you are. You're here for a reason. You're here at one of the best universities in the world. Um, don't undercut yourself. You know, own who you are, own your strength, own your accomplishments. Don't let the um, self-talk or the external talk get to you. Because um, that's, I think, one of the most um, challenging things. Um, and I think, you know, you're in an amazing place um, to continue to make impact. Um, I have no doubt that many of you will be in senior levels of, of academia or government, um, but I think learn as much as you can, take the risks, and go for it. And most importantly, believe in yourself.
<laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much for this time and taking the time to talk to us. And uh, and I'm sure that we'll be very excited to, to hear. It's been great talking yeah. to you, and it's really delightful to yeah. be here, Joanna. Thank you. Thank you.